Praise be Jesus and Mary. Now, now and forever. Today's gospel is taken from Matthew chapter 8. It's the beginning of chapter 8, right after the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus descends from the mountain where he had just preached the sermon, and he comes down among the people to minister to them. And one who couldn't go up the mountain to hear him uh, was the leper that we met in today's gospel. The Mosaic law actually required lepers to live in isolation and to dress in ragged clothes so that all who saw them would f basically flee from their presence, one, for fear of contamination, but also for fear of becoming ritually unclean if they had contact with the leper. We see those prescriptions in the Old Testament in the book of Leviticus, chapter 13, verses 45 and 46. When St. Augustine read today's encounter of Jesus in the leper, he commented saying that symbolically leprosy rep represents mortal sin, represents the sin that cuts us off from the life of grace, that cuts us off from God's friendship. Immortal sin also makes us a dead member of the body of Christ. It makes us a spiritual leper in that sense. The scriptures, in fact, teach that all illnesses, whether physical or spiritual or psychological, all of them can be traced back to the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, where Adam, the head of the human family, chose to rebel against his creator, chose to reject God. And as a bit of a side note, I do tend to ask people who have felt rejection if in their lives or have been rejected by others if they know who the first person was to ever be rejected. Believe it or not, the first person to ever be rejected was God himself. He was rejected by the fallen angels and then rejected by Adam and Eve at the dawn of human existence. And regarding Jesus, even the prophet Isaiah says he was a man who was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief, Isaiah 53, verse 3. And St. John writes that Jesus, quote, came to his own and his own did not receive him, John 1, verse 11, meaning that they didn't welcome him. So if we've ever felt the pain of rejection or if you've ever felt that you didn't belong, then you're in good company if you turn to our Lord because he knows what it's like to feel like an outcast, to feel unaccepted, just like the leper in today's story would have felt. But look what happened to this leper when he saw Jesus, when he set his eyes on our Lord. Not only was he bold enough to show himself before all the people, a thing that probably would have scandalized almost everyone there in the crowd to see a leper in the midst of them. But St. Matthew adds that the leper came and did Jesus homage in front of everyone. The Greek word there for homage is proskuneo, which literally means that he came and bowed down and worshiped Jesus. So this leper had great faith in God and he acknowledged Jesus to be God in front of all the people, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Matthew 8, verse 2. So this episode in St. Matthew's Gospel is actually, first of all, a profession of faith in the divinity of Jesus Christ. The leper bows down, he worships Jesus and asks him for a healing. In the Old Testament, second book of Kings, Naaman the Syrian, another, another leper, he also asked to be healed of leprosy. He wrote a letter, sent a letter to the king of Israel. Jehoram at the time was the king, uh, and he re regarding this request, and the king read the letter, and his response was the king rent his clothes, and he asked this. He said, am I God that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Am I God that I can cure leprosy? said the king, 2 Kings 5, verse 7. Translation, only God can cure leprosy, and the Israelites would have all known that at the time of Jesus. Notice how our Lord, who is God, of course, notice how he heals the leper. He stretches out his hand, he touches him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed, Matthew 8, verse 3. So the way that Jesus actually heals him is sacramental. You know, the seven sacraments are composed of what we call matter and form. For example, the sacrament of baptism. The matter is the water that you use. The form are the words spoken. The is, the, is or are the words that are spoken. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So each sacrament uses human words and gestures to convey God's grace. 
Jesus here, what does he do? He places his hand upon the leper, and many of the sacraments involve the use of hands and the laying on of hands or the touching of the person who's going to receive the sacrament. So he lays his hand upon the leper, and at the same time, he speaks the words, be clean. So matter, the touching of the leper, and form, the words, be clean. The greatest healing that God wants to give us is sacramental healing. It's the healing of our alienation from God, first of all, in the sacrament of baptism. It's the forgiveness of our sins and the restoration to God's friendship and grace in the sacrament of confession. And it's a final healing of all of our spiritual ills and sometimes even of our bodily ills as well in the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. So those three sacraments are actually previewed, as it were, in our Lord's healing of the leper in today's gospel. We'll just end with one other word on the sacraments. You know, when Jesus says at the Last Supper discourse, he says to his disciples in John 14, verse 12, truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, he said. Those greater works that Jesus is talking about or was talking about, refer primarily to the sacramental ministry of the church. In fact, we should stop and ask ourselves, well, which is, what is a greater miracle? Is it a greater miracle to heal a man of leprosy, so to cure a physical disease, or is, a greater miracle, is it a greater miracle spiritually to raise someone from the dead, as in the case of the sacrament of reconciliation? In God's eyes, the greater miracle and the more important miracle is the spiritual one. You know, when we confess our sins to the priest, and that's, of course, another sacrament that has foundation in the Scripture, John 20, verses 22 through 23, when we actually confess our sins to the priest and then we're absolved of those sins, we're spiritually made alive again. We move from being dead members of the body of Christ to being living members once again. So we should never encourage, be afraid to encourage anyone to go to the sacrament of confession. We should encourage people to go often to the sacrament of confession, especially those who haven't been for a long time. You might save someone's life if you actually do that. Encourage them to go to confession. Let's ask Our Lady for the grace to turn to her and to her son when we feel alienated or outcast like the leper in today's gospel. And let's also learn to share all of our ills with Jesus and Mary. And let's especially take advantage of God's healing power in the great sacrament of confession. Praise be Jesus and Mary.